So another place where interference plays a big role is in thin films, thin films. So let's say, in this case, we'll actually even use the ones we got here. So maybe we've got some surface here. So let's get a marker that actually writes. And it's stacked on top of some other surface. So, and this can work in a variety of contexts. I can put one type of glass on another type of glass. I can put some sort of translucent plastic on glass or vice versa. I could look at, like the question we're gonna look at, like gasoline sitting on a, you know, a film of water. Like if there was a gas spill on the ocean or something like that. A variety of things we can look at this. So, in this case, I've got air up here. And the one ex example we're gonna look at here in a problem in a sec. So, is gasoline on top of water. And so that's the context I'm gonna look at this here. And so really I say on top of water, I don't know what the water's on top of, but it's eventually gonna, it's on top of a lake, you know, make it all the way down to the bottom or whatever. So in this case, we might have some interference going on as well. So in the problem that we're about to do, we're looking at green light, so we'll use a green marker. And so if we kinda look at green light, so entering from air to the gasoline. So in this case, when the light enters the air, uh, or goes from the air, sorry, to the gasoline, it might get refracted a little bit and stuff like that. But what else is gonna happen besides just refraction? Reflection, and so some of this light is gonna make it back out. So, but like we said, refraction can also happen. So in this case, we give you some indices of refraction here for air, N equals one for gasoline, N equals 1.4 for water, N equals 1.33. Cool, so some of this ray is gonna get refracted when it goes from air to gasoline. Because the index of refraction gets bigger, so it's gonna bend towards or away from the normal. So it's gonna bend towards the normal, and so in this case, so maybe it gets a little more perpendicular, if you will. Cool. And when this hits the boundary between gasoline and water, same thing has the chance to happen. Some of it might get transmitted down, but we're, we're gonna ignore that. That's not actually relevant to the problem at hand. But some of it's gonna get reflected back up as well. And eventually pass back through the gasoline air interface, get refracted again. Maybe I should bend that out a little more, but bends again. So, but you end up with two light waves coming back out. And those two light waves have a chance to interfere with each other. If they're in phase, constructive interference. If they're out of phase, destructive interference. Cool, and we're gonna focus here on destructive interference. So, if you look at like, you know, anybody have nieces and nephews, or children for that matter? So, if you have nieces and nephews, or children, you'll learn that bubbles are one of the most amazing things in the world, along with little kids' movies. You can call them a babysitter, if you will. So DVDs of you know, random you know, little kids' Disney movies, VeggieTales, whatever, they're babysitters, electronic babysitters. Bubbles, on the other hand, they're not electronic, but it's also a good babysitter. You can keep kids occupied for hours. So unless you've got my niece. One of my nieces, she wants you to blow the bubbles but at least it's still entertainment for her. So, but if you look at the surface of bubbles, what do you often see? You see colors, and you see different colors and stuff like that. And it's this property of thin films why you're seeing it. So, as you go from air to whatever bubbles are made of, to air again on the inside, you've got a air, bubbles, air. You've got this kind of same type setup going on. And what happens, so as white light hits those bubbles, what's white light? all the colored spectrum. So what happens is some of those colors, or maybe one of those colors, gets eliminated by destructive interference. And if you eliminate a color out of white light, you're gonna see the complementary color instead. And that's why you start seeing colors on the bubbles. And it's this process right here of some color of light getting, undergoing destructive overlap. So in this case, 
green light's coming in, and I really showed somehow red light magically, but that's not what this means. I just wanted to show the difference in color here. So, but the two reflected beams, one on the air-gasoline interface, the other one on the gasoline-water interface, they have the chance to interfere. And we want to look at the conditions for them interfering in a destructive fashion. So in this case, for them to dis interfere destructively, so we got to look at how much further the light ray passes that goes down to the second medium versus the one that was reflected right back up initially. Well, how much further does it go? Well, if we define the thickness of this layer here as T, then how much further does the beam that passes through go than the original reflected green beam? 2T. So it goes a distance of 2T further. And in this case, if I want destructive interference to take place, then I want this extra length, just like before it was called delta L, I want that to be, let's, say, let's look at constructive first. If I want it to be constructive, what would I want this extra distance to equal? Some number of wavelengths. But in this case, if I want destructive interference, what do I really want then? Yeah, half wavelength. So I want this to equal, you know, m plus a half times lambda, where m is 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth. But we're going to cloud the water just a little bit here. So if you guys maybe recall from Physics 111, looking at standing waves on a string and stuff like that. So if I tied a string to that wall, so, and I took the other end of the string right over here, and I oscillated it once and caused a big wave, so with a positive amplitude, to be heading towards that wall. When it hits the wall and turns around, what's going to happen to that wave that had a positive amplitude? It gets inverted and it comes back with a negative amplitude. So when it hits that boundary, it comes back. The same thing may or may not happen to light that is reflected. So in this case, when you go from a smaller index of refraction to a larger index of refraction, the reflected light does indeed get inverted, 180 degrees out of phase with the incident light. So however, when you go from a high, a larger index of refraction to a smaller index of refraction, that doesn't happen. It doesn't get inverted. So kind of a random thing. And that's the last piece of the puzzle we need here. So this equation right here then is not necessarily always true in the form that we've got it. We've got to potentially modify it one more way. So if we look, from air to gasoline, will the light reflected, di diagrammed here in green, will it be inverted? Yeah, we're going from small to large. Smaller to larger, it's going to get inverted right there. So the green one that's being reflected there is inverted relative to the incident beam. So if we look here again, from gasoline to water, is this reflected beam going to get inverted as well? No. In this case, it's not, because I'm going from larger index to smaller index. No inversion takes place. And so let's just say that this distance here, diagrammed in red, the extra distance of 2t, let's say it did come out to a perfect number of half wavelengths. What kind of interference would take place? We'd think so, except for the fact that this guy got inverted. This guy didn't. And so as a result, just due to the fact that 2t is some half number of wavelengths, it looks like they'd be out of phase. But due to the fact that one of these got inverted and the other one didn't, that would mean they'd be out of phase. And two wrongs make a right. And it turns out, if I follow this under this scenario, they're going to be in phase. And it would be constructive. And so what I really need now, so because one of those is inverted and the other one is not, I need another half of a wavelength over here. Cool. And now I can kind of rearrange this a little bit. So, and that is on your sheet. If I subtract this half wavelength after distributing this through, so you'll find that if you have a phase shift between reflected rays, you find out that instead, 2t equals m lambda. So if you rearrange that, and again, this 
is if there is a phase shift between the two reflected beams relative to each other. But let's picture ourselves an imaginary case now. Not the one we're going to work in a problem, but let's say instead of air to gasoline to water, let's say the gasoline actually was lying on some glass. And maybe that glass would have an index of refraction of 1.5 or 1.52 if it's crown glass or whatever. But let's just say it's 1.5, this glass. So again, from air to gasoline, would this reflected light beam get inverted? Yeah, still going from lower to higher. Now from gasoline to glass, would the reflected beam in red also get inverted? Yeah. So would these two beams be out of phase if they traveled the same, you know, some multiple of wavelengths? Not anymore. They both got inverted. And so in that case, the 2t would just equal some you know, half number of wavelengths in that case. And so you have two, two different equations here. One, if these two beams are out of phase with respect to each other, or if they're in phase with respect to, the, to each other, if you will, as far as just that reflection part of it. And so in this case, if there is a phase shift, like in our original problem of air to gasoline to water, there's your equation. However, the second problem that we're not actually going to work, but from air to, say, glassoline to glass. So 2t in this case would just simply equal m plus 1 half number of wavelengths. Cool. So that muddies the water just a little bit, whether you've got a, a phase shift of the two reflected beams relative to each other. Can I muddy the water a little more? So here's the problem. Does light travel the same speed in all these media? No, it doesn't. And so notice this extra distance of 2t that's being traveled here. Is that the speed of light in air? Is that the speed it's going while it's in here? No. And so that's why, in this case, in gasoline, having a higher index of refraction than air, is light going to travel faster or slower? slower. And because it's traveling slower, will that change its frequency? No, but what will it change? Wavelength. Its wavelength. And so that's why we're special to you know, note that this is the wavelength inside that particular film that we're talking about the thickness of. So because it's not the wavelength up here that I'm caring about, it's this extra distance here in this particular film that we're concerned with. And so it's the wavelength in that film, not the wavelength in the vacuum or in air or anything like that. Everybody cool with that? Let's look at some calculations. All right, number 10. Number 10 says, what is the maximum thickest thickness of a layer of gasoline, n equals 1.4, floating on water, 1.33, if green light, wavelength of which in air is 565 nanometers in air, uh, is eliminated from the reflected light by destructive interference. OK, so pretty much the conceptual example we set up here originally is the one we're going to be looking at. And this last layer is water. It's not glass. And because of that, one of these reflected will get inverted. The other one won't. And so in this case, to end up with them, because there is a phase shift relative to each other, this is our condition. And again, whether you really have a great handle on this derivation, if you do, great. It'll make it easier to remember and understand and memorize. But end of the day, you need to know how to plug and chug these, and you need to know which one applies. So look and see if you're going from, if you're going from lower to higher twice in a row, great. There's no phase shift, and you'd use this guy. But if you're going from lower index to higher index, but then higher to lower, then you're going to have a phase shift, and you use this guy. OK. So in this case, because it is air to gasoline to water, lower to higher, but then higher to lower, there is a phase shift relative to each other for the reflected beams. And so we're going to use this guy. That 2t equals m times lambda in the film. And so we want the minimum thickness, the minimum thickness here of this film. So 
what values of m can we have? Yeah, zero, one, two, but can I really use zero in this case? No, because what kind of a film would that be? It'd be no film. <laughs> so if we're actually on a real film here, I gotta start with m equals one in this case. So if we were using this equation right here, could I use m equals zero in this equation? Yeah, you bet, because I would still have an actual film length. But in this one, I've gotta start with m equals one. And so in this case, two times my thickness equals one, times the wavelength in that film. Do I have the wavelength in the actual film here which is made of gasoline? No, we've got it in air. If you recall, another way to look at this, the index of refraction is equal to the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum relative to the speed of light in whatever medium you're talking about. But that's also equal to the wavelength in a vacuum relative to the wavelength in that particular medium, in this case, gasoline. And so we can use that. We can see that the wavelength in gasoline by rearranging is equal to the wavelength in a vacuum, which is pretty much the same as an air, divided by the index of refraction. So in our case, we are given it in air, but air and vacuum are really close. Not a big difference there. And so what is the wavelength of this green, so-called green light when it's in the gasoline layer? What is it? Cool. Cool. And as long, whatever units I have here, that's what units my thickness is going to come out in the context of. So in this case, what do we get for our thickness? Somebody plug and chug and solve that one for me. And right now, I've got this in nanometers, but again, they could ask you the, for the thickness of the film in meters, centimeters, millimeters, whatever. You might have to convert this. So, but whatever units you use here for your wavelength, that's the units your thickness comes out in. 